What's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of the Cooped Up Podcast, the podcast uh, that one of us forgot to pick up toilet paper on the way home. So uh, it's me. No, I'm just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it could have been me too. <laughs> just... I decided uh, that accountability is important, even though I haven't introduced myself yet. But yes, it's, yeah. it's me. It's me. <laughs> Let's... Listen, we uh, we uh, you know, we keep each other honest around here. Listen, sometimes you forget uh, to buy toilet paper. Sometimes uh, you know you forget <laughs> to buy toilet paper when it's too late. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, we've uh, been one of those. It's like, well, good thing I live here because I can just take a shower. Or... Yeah, those are the worst. <laughs> okay, let's start here. There was a. <laughs> There's an alternate reality um, where I successfully installed a bidet, which over that year would have saved me a lot of toilet paper. But I fucked it up, didn't know I fucked it up, went to work, partially flooded my downstairs neighbor's apartment. They came in, didn't have a key, drilled the lock off my door, stopped it, put it back to where it was, then replaced the lock, then didn't tell me they replaced the lock, didn't tell me that my key wasn't working. Then I call them, because I'm locked out of my own apartment, when I'm having them come over to do my podcast, Shona Chumps. (laughs) Then after that, they say, oh, there's a key in your mailbox. And then that key also doesn't work, and there isn't another key, so they end up drilling the lock off my door entirely, and that's how we got in the house that day, and I didn't get to use the bidet once. So, (laughs) um, if I were even, like, vaguely handy, this would not have happened, and I wouldn't be in the crisis I'm in right now, a year ago, or if I just bought in bulk. But, I mean, what's what's more American than just being generally unprepared? Anyway, yeah, I'm well, Cy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, what's up, guys? We're the podcast that talks about pop culture stuff and everything in between. And each week, I usually have on a, uh, a friend or, or two or several. And you know, this week, I uh, we got a new guest on this week. Uh, one of my very good friends in the esports circles, coming to us from undisclosed location. And are you still in Ohio? Yes, and I really, really don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to be. Yeah, it's uh, one uh, one of your uh, co-hosts on the Shonen Chumps podcast, if you guys are familiar with that work, uh, commentator, friend extraordinaire. Uh, it's Sai joining us on this week's episode. Sai, it's good to it's good to see you. It's good to talk to you. How are, how are we doing? Happy belated birthday, by the way. Thank yeah. you. I got to say, November 6th was quite the birthday. Quite the <laughs> Nothing birthday. Nothing eventful happened that day. Nothing else happened. Just every... As that was all happening, every individual happy birthday message was just like two psychic damage, two psychic damage. You're like, oh, it's your day. I'm like, the fuck it is. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm doing yeah. good. I'm doing good. Yeah. Narrator, listen. No, he isn't. But we're yeah, doing. listen. Yeah, listen. No, you know, we'll 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 hit it up top, and then we'll you know we'll keep the good trains going. Um, we originally planned to record this uh, on Tuesday on your on your birthday, uh, but. So, you know, we uh, we pushed it back a couple of days and hey, listen, things are kind of weird right now. Uh, the vibes mm-hmm. are off. Uh, the vibes are bad, depending on who you are and where you live. And listen, lean on lean on your friends. Uh, find your resources. Uh, love your neighbors. Uh, tell your friends you love them. And, uh, you know, I, I saw a post online that said that we're kind of an airport terminal time right now where time is not real. Money doesn't matter. You can have a drink at 10 in the morning and nobody should be allowed to judge you for it. And I think if, listen, uh, I just ate about $25 worth of Korean fried chicken and I, I don't care. I, I had ice cream for dinner two days in a row because why the fuck not? Why would I not? <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely been one of those things. Uh one of my friends, he was like, I went down to my local convenience store on Tuesday just to get ice cream because I got to do something. And then the clerk said, you and about 30 other people. And I'm like, damn, he's so good for that. <laughs> Actually, as the election votes were getting counted, Tuesday is when we do like our rotating friend like movie night. So we were all like, oh, we'll watch Spider-Man 2. You haven't seen it. So I was like, you're right. I love Sam Raimi. Let's check this out. And they're like, don't look at your phone. And I'm like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and then like every second of the movie, it's just like, I should be looking at my phone right now. And they're like, how'd you like the movie? I'm like, do you think I care right now? I mean, it was cool. <laughs> Doc Ock was great. What's happening? Like it was not, the vibes were not good. And still. You give a fuck about Tobey Maguire right now? No. Also, I don't know if you've seen Spider-Man 2, but they hate him in that movie. God. Do you oh, I, I listen. That is one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. Every single person that can speak uses their body to tell Tobey Maguire they hate him or Spider Man <laughs> or both. 
I don't. I think there was one lady that supported him in the entire movie, and it was the lady with the violin, and she was mad off key, which is crazy because yeah. she's singing. She had a violin. She was like, I don't really get the other parts of music, but everybody he ran into was just like, man, I hate you. You're poor, and Spider Man, I want him dead. And he's just like, okay. <laughs> which, Bye. which was pretty good foreshadowing for what my life is about to be like uh, but yeah it yeah. was fun um, but that wasn't a good era well that wasn't a solid era of Marvel movies you know before like the big bubble that we got but um, more so primarily I saw you tweet who wants to come on my podcast and talk about Agatha and I was like oh I definitely do because yeah. I think that Agatha is actually a really really big sleeper show as far as, like, the MCU, like, movies and shows go. Agatha's been fantastic, and I think all of us were pretty pleasantly surprised. Uh, and I had a great time watching it, so I'm excited to uh, chat, chat with you about it. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, you know, we are uh, coming to you guys a week after the Agatha All Along finale, um, and we're going to talk about that and, you know, just some other general stuff as, as we get through the uh, – the episode but you know just up top real quick i agree um i think the the show was very very solid but also i just want to circle back that i'm surprised you've gone this uh as you know as someone that swims in similar circles we like a lot of the same stuff i'm surprised you went that long without seeing spider-man 2 which is like on a lot of people's mount rushmore of like you know in terms of like peak comic book movies before everything became a machine Mm -hmm. um you know that's that's one of the ones which is like you know if this movie if if those raimi spider-man movies don't make money and if you know if, if that first run of x-men films don't don't succeed as well as they do you know we don't get the mcu so i'm surprised you've gotten this uh you know this long into into adulthood and you hadn't seen it yet and the really crazy thing about it is that as a child i love spider-man one i was like that was a great movie and then spider-man 2 came out and i was just nowhere to be found i don't know how <laughs> i genuinely enjoyed the first one uh I think I like two a little more than the first one, just because I think the way that Sam Rainey was able to like bring horror elements into it was really cool and different. Yeah. And a big thing that I like right now from the MCU is like the projects that are like a little different and a little bit less cookie cutter and formulaic. And this one, and this was way more formulaic than Agatha for sure. But um, the hospital scene with Doc Ock and the way it just goes oh. pure horror. Just there's no there's no comedy. It's, it is just horror. It's just these tentacles killing him uh, or killing other people and him. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is cool. This is a lot more interesting than, I mean, there, I don't know, there's what, 35 MCU films. There's a the lot. Technical MCU, not counting blade yeah. and everything that was before it, you know? Uh, but I really enjoyed it. Now, yeah. now Agatha, here's my thing with Agatha. Uh, I have wanted to see Wiccan represented in the MCU in some way since the character existed. I was like, Mm -hmm. wow, a queer superhero character. Finally, there's not a lot of them. There's a couple of X-Men. You know, they be getting down or whatever. But, like, it's just it's a very (laughs) short window of people. And um, it really resonated with me that Marvel was just like, hey, we're going to give you an MCU project filled with great actors and gay witches. And I was like, I am oblig. I have to watch this because I've been asking for it for 12 years, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I really, I genuinely really liked it. Yeah. Um, my thought process going into it was that, you know, again, I've, we, we've all, as, as anyone that's part of the MCU, if I think if it's safe to say, if you're deep, if you're this deep into it at this point, like you got to see it all the way through, you know, through the good, through the bad, um, you know, post Endgame, obviously the, the big talking point has been Marvel's kind of had a, a really hard time trying to figure out the whole multiverse side of things. And yeah. when the highs have been high, you know, things like Guardians 3 have been really good. This, I thought the second season of Loki was very good. Um, and then you get the low lows, which is stuff like Secret Invasion, which I think is one of the worst shows I've ever watched. I don't. I have not heard a single good thing about Secret Invasion. It I is didn't watch it, but I've heard so, nothing good. It is... So bad. You get like you get Amelia Clark and you get Samuel L. Jackson. You get these some really good actors in this show. And it just and not only just that, you're taking one of like the most iconic runs in comic books. Like Secret Invasion is like and when you you know talk to a lot of comic book people, they love that 
arc of comics. It's like, yeah, these heroes you've grown attached to might not have been who you thought they are the whole time. And I thought that concept that brought to the small screen was going to be very interesting. And it just wasn't. It was a complete waste of time. They spend way too much uh, – just the way that the – they sort of like, uh, you know, bastardize certain characters in the MCU. Like, poor, poor Don Cheadle. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, the whole thing would just felt like – it was so bad. <laughs> like, okay. I, there's There's been a lot of situations where I feel like the MCU has really misplayed their characters. Uh, they – post-Endgame, I really don't like how they handled Nick Fury – um yeah because in the marvels which i i really wanted to like the marvels i wanted to like it so so bad because i and my and my issue with the marvels isn't just like i I really wanted to see that movie work because i loved all three of the main actresses i think they're all super talented and my issues with that movie was not them it Mm -hmm. was virtually every other character on the screen and that includes nick fury who went to being this like really prestigious, like well revered character in the MCU, and then it gets to the Marvels, and the script for the Marvels just wasn't great. But then they took Nick Fury and they tried to kind of pivot him into being a comic relief character, which he hadn't been previously in the MCU, and it didn't resonate. And that's not because Sam Jackson is funny; he's hilarious. But like, they tried to like. I, I think there's a point where Monica Rambo is trying to use her powers. He's like, come on, girl, black girl magic. And I was like, ah, yep. <laughs> it's not really great. And then, like, it's it sucks that he has kind of a prominent role in that movie compared to what he normally gets. And he really doesn't do much. He kind of, like, would pop up, dump exposition, make a joke that wouldn't land, and then he was hurting cats for an hour. And I'm like, I don't really think that's how we should treat Sam Jackson. Like, I feel like yeah. Samuel L. Jackson from Pulp Fiction, we should probably yeah. be using his talents a little bit more. And I just feel like he got really squandered. So then Secret Invasion comes out and everyone says it's terrible. I was like, I kind of, the writing was a little on the wall, but I'm, I'm sad to hear it still either way. Yeah. And what's tough about that, just on the Marvels, is that, uh, that movie came out after Secret Invasion had come out, so you see Sam Jackson oh, go okay. through this. Yeah, so so you see, and like I don't in terms of like release order, like it came out like physically after the movie came out. In terms of where it takes place in a timeline, I don't think it's been like really decided yet. Obviously, it's in a post, it's in a post Miss Marvel, like that whole sort of uh, you know all that had had transpired already. Because um, if yeah, if I remember correctly, the opening scene of this movie is literally takes takes place like right after Miss Marvel finishes. Um, which I love personally. We love New Jersey based superheroes uh, in, in, this, in this apartment. I've seen, seen, seen a New lot Jersey. of Ohio based superheroes. Yeah. Some, There's uh, that one. Ohio based supervillains for sure. <laughs> Definitely that lately. Uh, but yeah. not a lot of your foes. No. Um, uh, but yeah, so like, what's, it, it was just so like totally jarring to me where it's just like you see Samuel L. Jackson in a very serious, like, you know, noir grounded, like he's gone through some shit in this show. Like mm-hmm. he's just battered and beat up. And then you see him completely pivot into like, like, like you said, this sort of like comic relief character just doesn't really fit the character. It felt like sort of a worse version of what they tried to do with Drax in the guardians movies where, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they, they introduced him as this, like this menacing, you know, tough character. And then in subsequent films, they sort of make him the gag guy, which like, in in retrospect, like some of the jokes worked. I don't really, I didn't really think they needed to dumb that character down for me personally. But no, yeah. But to to pivot it all back to to the Agatha of it all, you know, um, I think Marvel has sort of figure realizes like, hey, I think quality is better than quantity. They really scale back their release stuff this year. Um, I actually completely forgot, and I still might be wrong about this. I'm pretty sure Echo came out this year. I'm almost positive. Oh, that, that show came and this went. Year. Oh my god, it did. Like I didn't even to win, bro. <laughs> yeah, because I remember. I think I saw the trailer. I was like, "That could be solid." Because it was Echo, and then Vincent D'Onofrio was involved somehow, right? Or yeah, Kingpin, he was he was, was like, reprising his role as Kingpin. So. And I was like, "That could be solid," but I literally forgot about it. And then I think my my friends that I do uh, show and chumps with they watch it. And they're like, "Don't, it's, it's, no, it's, it's good. Skip it." Uh, but <laughs> yes, I think from day one. The quality over quantity is what we should have been getting. And I understand, I'm not, I don't blame Marvel necessarily because, like, 
seeing Iron Man blow up the way it did, also, we really don't give Blade the respect it deserves, but I'll get to that later. But, like, seeing Iron Man blow up the way that it did, of course, they're like, oh, shit, we got to milk this for everything it's worth. Let's do this whole thing. And it worked. But we, even before we got to Endgame um, and, you know, the snap and all that good stuff, there were a lot of movies along the way that really weren't that great. But after that, it's really, really, really been a struggle. And, I mean, and the, and the lack of quality kind of, like, shows like, yeah, I, I think they really figured this out with Agatha. Episode six alone of Agatha is like one of the most artistic things I've seen Marvel do in like a couple of years at least. Yeah, like just Patty Lupone's episode, excuse me, just Lily's episode alone of Agatha. That's what really like I was enjoying the show, and then we got to that point, and I was like, hey, everyone, Agatha's fantastic. It's not as formulaic. There's a bunch of queer characters getting to just like fully be characters versus the kind of like maybe they are, maybe they aren't. You know hide them in the corner kind of like way that Marvel and Disney handle like queer characters. And it's just like, no, they're actually just having like a full experience. They're like fully fleshed out people and the art direction, well, not the art direction, but like the, the cinematography in episode six is so fantastic. And the way that all the, the foreshadowing from Liliac all like starts to get pieced together and make sense. Like it was great. I, I really hope that Marvel keeps this lane of just experimenting. Because, again, when we had uh, Doctor Strange, uh, the second Doctor Strange, Sam Raimi, and they were doing a lot of really cool stuff. They were experimenting. They were like, let's play with some horror. Let's break up the formula somewhat. And I really enjoyed the movie. There were some Marvel people that were just like, oh, it's, I don't know, it's too weird and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, but there's like 52 Marvel movies you could have seen that are very hero yeah. walks from point A to point B <laughs> and learns a lesson. Like, this was very different. This was like about ethics, about grief, about necromancy. Like, a lot of cool topics <laughs> that you don't really get to see. So, um, again, that's another reason I really enjoyed Agatha is that they're like, we. this is not the most formulaic Marvel show. And it is a sequel, which we've had a lot of sequels. But WandaVision, which I think was their best show overall, personally, or at least at least my favorite of them. Yeah. Uh, for us to get a spinoff that we don't really need and for it to still be this good, I think really does speak volumes to, like, where Marvel can take this if they just lock in. Yeah. And if I think correctly, I think this is the Agatha was the first of these Marvel TV shows to be launched under the Marvel Television umbrella. Okay. Um, they've finally done the uh, one of the things that Marvel has done is that they've split up their, you know, they're not having movie people make TV shows, which I think was a problem they were having with some of the with some of the television stuff. I think you know from I forget which show it was. I want to say it was She Hulk. They had people that had never worked in television working mm. on the show. So, you know, I, I – and, you know, She-Hulk is what it is. I enjoyed it personally. I like, liked but it. I, I, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. um, I like I, – I, one of my favorite shots in Marvel TV is Charlie Cox taking the walk of shame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so good. It's so funny. It's really good. So um, – but I think you can really see it. It's like, okay, there is very clearly a writer's room for this show. Um, you know, it, it feels – and, and I like that they didn't go with, like, the whole, like, four or five episode uh, stint thing. I like that they gave us a little bit more to chew on. Yeah. Um, and I agree with you when it comes to, like, in terms of uh, WandaVision, in my opinion, also being the best show that Marvel's made. Um, it does fall flat, and it does fall into a couple of Marvel tropes. Like, obviously, the show does, you know, it, it sets up these characters only for them to be, like, a big blow-it-up battle at the end of the show, which is, like, something that Marvel, the Marvel shows have struggled with yeah. since they've been yeah. coming out. Um, but... Uh, I again when Agatha was announced, I was just like, okay, you know, I like the I, I like the character of Agatha Harkness. I love Catherine Hahn. She's a phenomenal Same. actress so in everything talented. she's in, like in, in, in Step Brothers. Um, one of my favorite shows that she's in is Mrs. F is uh, Mrs. Fletcher. That show is absolutely hilarious. She plays a <laughs> she plays a divorced mom who <laughs> who discovers what internet porn is for the first time. Oh my god! And it, it just like opens up her world. It is one of the funniest shows i've ever seen it is absolutely hilarious um it, it's 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 like peak Catherine Hahn. you know she's goofy she's dramatic she's weird um it's really really good she, she's so she's so funny and i i actually yeah. honestly i might check that out because uh i feel like the main things i saw her in were uh wandavision and agatha uh knives out too and then there's something oh i think parks and rec I didn't yeah, parks and rec, but her <laughs> moments in parks and rec are like super funny um <laughs> but so funny in that show i'm happy she got to show off her range a lot too because yes 
I, I know that Agatha is, you know, you know, mischievous and, you know, her main note is to be like kind of snarky and quirky, but like there's, there were a lot of layers to her character this season. And I really like that they actually really let her just play with her range and just go to all these different places. Like, especially once we got to like the backstory of, um, you know, of when she was supposed to die originally. And I, I, I really like that. How do I put this? I like I loved the reveal with Wiccan mm-hmm. on this on the second to last episode, like yeah. the way he kind of just like echoed what his mom was doing completely by accident again. Because um, <laughs> when I got to the episode and I realized that I was like, oh wow, that's crazy. Also, yeah. I had a weird gap between episode seven and eight because I was using my friend's Disney Plus, watched episode seven, went out and did stuff, and then Sunday I was like, let me watch episode eight, and they wanted me to like log in and then they sent him like a validation code and then they wanted me to like change his password i was like that's invasive the same friend is bringing me toilet paper of course i, I feel like <laughs> um but like they wanted me to do all this shit so then i tried to like pirate it off pirate bay and then i haven't been on pirate bay in a while and it got buggier and more virusy so i, I said let me just get my credit card i just linked it to my hula i said i'm gonna finish this out because most also because we had to record, and I was like, I would love to watch episode nine, and then I was like, yeah, I'd love to come on and finish the series with you, and I was like, fuck, I actually can't watch the last episode until I figure this out. Uh, but <laughs> but ten ninety nine later, we got there, and <laughs> someone on Twitter That's made a really crazy. good point. They were saying that uh, black women are two for two for leaving Westview with just incredible superpowers and not yeah. facing the consequences, and I said, correct. That's what we deserved. Yes. I I love Sashir Zameda. I think she's so funny. She's so talented. She's great in the show, too. Like, I, I, it's, it's it was such a joy to get to see her uh, get to do everything she got to do in the MCU. And then her character, like, has a chance to continue on forward. Um, or not. Honestly, if Jen just wants to go live her life after all that, cool. You don't even have to bring her back. But I'm yeah. glad she actually did get somewhat <laughs> of a happy ending. Cause, yeah, uh, not everybody. Got- my my only complaint is that I wished like because every other witch in the show got like an episode dedicated to them. I wish we got to spend a little bit more time with Jen because mm-hmm. it felt like they were setting her up to be you know that she's okay. She knows she recognizes that when they're in the morgue that uh, trial, it's like okay, these are grow lights. It's like okay, is this you know Jen made it as far as she did farther than any of the other witches in the coven, is this going to be her trial? Are we going to get to see more of her backstory of how she right. was bound? And then they just kind of blew through that with some expository dialogue. She gets her powers back and then, you know, she, she flies away. And I, I mm-hmm. feel like there's maybe more to, to, to set up there. Um, they can maybe go a couple of angles with that. The character of Jennifer Kale is very prominent in the midnight suns. Uh, if my memory serves me correct. Um, and there is, uh, confirmed a you know a third uh, part of this trilogy with the Vision Quest series that we know that we're getting at some point within the next couple of years. I think they said that's slated to come out in 2026. So okay. maybe maybe you revisit uh, Jen's character in that part of the show where you have this sort of like magic versus technology sort of uh, angle. Um, but we'll see. Again, I, I, I thought uh, Sashira Zameda was fantastic in the show. And, you know, like we mentioned up top, all, all the new characters uh, are completely in their bag. Um, yeah. I thought Joe Locke's uh, portrayal of uh, of Wiccan was really, really cool. Uh, perfect. His, yeah, it was, it was perfect. Um, I loved reading the press stuff uh, that he was just like, yeah, I kind of had to sit. He's like, I popped four melatonin the night before so I can, like, actually go to sleep before the episode airs. <laughs> and I'm like, man, that is... That is so real. Um, but again, Patty Lapone in her bag. She oh, is so good. So, Lilia so is so good. Uh, I love Aubrey Plaza. I love Rio. Mm-hmm. I love the. We can you know spend more time with her. But Patty Lapone, you know, I, I don't think this show ever hits that like you know what is grief or what of what is love but grief persevering or what is grief but love persevering like mm-hmm. moment. But I think that entire episode uh, with. Um, you know, so dedicated to, to, to Pat. Attack. One second, my cat yeah, is yeah. attacking my camera. Hold on one second. Hey, Cats are me. wild. Uh, but Two yeah, I, 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 <laughs> you're, you're fine. <laughs> it's, oh. I'm keeping oh. this all in. This is so funny. <laughs> okay, that didn't happen. Please, please continue your very poignant thought. 
yeah. about grief. <laughs> I'm keeping I would all love that to hear it. Real funny. I really would. <laughs> yeah, but it's like I feel like the show never hits that like what is uh you know uh, what is gr- uh, grief but love persevering, which is like one of the standout quotes from WandaVision. Uh, mm-hmm. It is you know it, it's brilliant writing, but I think the entirety of Death's Hands and Mind, like you said, you get to see Lilia's journey. And if you're someone like me who's a psychopath and you watch every episode breakdown video of this show on YouTube, you know you you'll learn right away. It's like you know the way that some of these lines of dialogue string together, it sounds like uh, Lilia is sp- is like speaking out of uh, out of time. And we find mm-hmm. out that, you know, that's a, indeed exactly the case. And also just like the costume design of that episode was aw- was awesome. Oh, so good. It's it was so it's it's so good as a reform theater kid. You know, I loved the I loved, you know, the camp. I loved the the set design. Like I, I, I loved uh, the entirety of what this episode's uh, is setting up. Um, and I think in, in terms of just like where the series goes, I think that is, uh, you know, the, the high point for me. I just think Patty Lapone was in her bag the entirety of, uh, of the show. I, I think she devoured the entire time she was there. Also, I am also a reform theater kid, performing arts kid. Let's go. Yes, we, Let's we, go. we did that for a while. We're in your yeah. walls, folks. We're, 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 we're walls. everywhere. You've never heard a, a, a smash tourney without theater kid energy on the mic. It's just our thing. We all did this together. Uh, commentary yeah. is just it, it, commentary is just advanced forms of yes and. That's why yes. we're all so good at this. I'm so good at improv, and like <laughs> it's like, what did I learn that skill for? Oh, cool! I have an avenue where I can use it. Great, because I'm yeah. What I was a lot of practice. <laughs> but um but yeah patty lapone honestly i don't think they could have casted anyone better to do that role i think no. the way the final scene when she, the uh queen of cups and you see everything flip upside down and you already know what's going to happen but it's just so gorgeous seeing her hanging on like that and just accepting like look you know what i've been alive for a few hundred years Oh. I've been kind of running for my destiny and I've been really afraid to uh, authentically really look into the future because, you know, I've been so chastised for it. I've been punished. I've had to, you know, leave all these villages. But for her to just be able to use that and still protect everyone around her. And it's not even like Agatha, like, screws her over or anything. She's just like, I think this is just kind of the end of my journey. And it's just such a gorgeous shot of her just falling upside down. Oh. Like, like, when that was happening, I was like, hey, everyone. Stop ignoring Agatha, please. It's actually really good. I know there's been a lot of mediocre stuff in the middle. This isn't one to skip. This one's really, really good. And yeah. I'm still on the train of trying to convince people to check it out because it, it really did just break a lot of boundaries. And the performances, the performances alone. Like, I feel like the MCU shows are like, when I think about them being good, I'm just like, oh, that plot line was so cool. I don't really jump to the acting quality first. Yeah. And it's not to say that the acting isn't bad or anything, like or is bad or anything, but this one, the acting performances from the cast were just so phenomenal. It was like, wow, I'm really, really invested in these characters because every actor on screen is just like doing some of the best work they've done in a while. And yeah. it really it really spoke to me seeing Patty Lapone just get to just fully have her episode like that. <laughs> My only yeah. gripes with the show. Uh, they're small. I agree with you that Jen should have gotten her own episode. I fully agree with that. My only other one is that I feel like the Salem Seven didn't get to do anything. Yeah, that and was that point too. Yeah, that might have been like an episode window constraint. Like maybe they thought they'd have ten, but they had nine. But they're originally introduced, and you're like, oh, looming big bad. I'm curious about this, and then. It ends up getting resolved in that way, it, which wasn't a bad way to resolve it, but we never really, I never felt like, excuse me, I never felt like afraid of the Salem Seven because they were just kind of like an episode and a half behind just chasing them, but they never really like did anything. They didn't really get to, they didn't really get to do anything either. So I, I feel like yeah. that portion was a little bit wasted, but that's a very small complaint compared to like a lot of MCU shows where I have way more complaints. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I feel the same way. I kind of thought like the way that they ended episodes, uh, where the way they ended episodes, uh, six or seven, whichever one I times an enigma. I already lost count, uh, oh, but, yeah. uh, but whatever they ended that episode, they only show five of the Salem seven, like actually hit the swords. 
So I was like, okay, you know, technically two of these animals can fly. Maybe these two like get through and that becomes an, you know, that can become a side point, but it felt like that part of, they, they had really wanted to finish that part of the story. Like you said, like it felt like there might've been some stuff left on the cutting room floor. I know Jack Schaefer even said in, in interviews that there was even certain stuff that they couldn't, uh, shoot or use i think there were you know every, a lot of people point to the lack of a post credit scene at the end of this which mm-hmm. first and personally i love that you know i love that there's just some there is some mystery at the end of, of what happened you know where this is all going to set up it doesn't immediately fit into the in, into the the bigger picture of it all which i think is great um but i know she did say that you know there was some post credit scene stuff that they they filmed but um it got left in the cutting room floor um but yeah, I, I think that f- felt a little, uh, f- felt just a, a little uh, rushed. But again, um, I think, like you said, when you look at Marvel stuff in the past, you th- you think to the sequences, you know, the, the 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 big, the big stuff you show for in a Marvel movie, which is the fight scenes and all, the, and and, the, mm-hmm. and some of the plotline mm-hmm. stuff. You never really get to talk about the acting, and um, you know, Patty Lapone, one of the high points for me. Uh, but also the you know the other big one and, and again a major character in Marvel lore in death is established in this yes. show uh, yes and Aubrey Plaza I I love Aubrey Plaza I've been an Aubrey Plaza uh, you know enjoyer uh, of stock since I saw her in Parks and Rec uh, I love her in a bunch of the other like weird side movies she does because it's she's she plays basically like the same character in every sort of show she mm-hmm. she does she's just this, like you know very quirky uh uh you know protagonist with some dark energy to her which i think is awesome um and i i I love the way that they handle uh the character of death in this show i i did too i I thought it was really cool for them to have um to have it be such a sorry one second uh to have it be such a back and forth between death and agatha and for them again to have their romance and it to be pretty pretty in your face honestly like it wasn't like the typical subtle maybe they were maybe they weren't they're like no no we dated yeah. and this <laughs> happened it's not um, captain marvel and valkyrie where they just like you know they were roommates or whatever and they it's were like, roommates right and it's they like, were wow roommates. <laughs> she's at thanksgiving again uh-huh. got it <laughs> they they live in a one bedroom got huh. it <laughs> so like wait but, so you like sleep on the couch you're like how does this oh oh you don't have a couch <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> where's your husband gonna sit like no 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 wait a this second isn't, this isn't that <laughs> um but I, I like that they were actually really fiercely apologetic about unapologetic about it and her role she did such a good job of just kind of being the lurking big bad but still you know not necessarily having like sympathy for agatha but her connection with her was just so complicated that she still wanted to kind of go through this whole song and dance with her uh also the way she pops up after mrs hart just dies again shout out to deborah joe rupp love her uh <laughs> did not expect her to die and i was like oh we're doing that this season okay we're, yeah. we're going there they killed kitty foreman i was they freaking out kitty foreman for nothing <laughs> she has no good luck going into a basement she shouldn't be in every single <laughs> time she go downstairs and get high or get drunk or whatever in the 70s show and now she's dead and <laughs> she will never go in a basement ever again for the rest which of by the life. way now that we're at the end of the series and you get the reveal that Agatha had been like, you know, pretending to have the witch's road just to have the conflict where they all blast her and she goes, takes her energy or whatever. For her to grab Mrs. Hart for that was crazy. Yeah, that's Because she knew damn well she had no magic. <laughs> so what did my girl die for, for real? Like, that's wild. Like, I guess Nothing. she was going to take their power and then just kill her the normal way and be like, eh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That was insane. Crazy. Yeah, that was nuts. Um, but yeah, like I just I, I first of all what I loved about uh the whole death of it all is that I love that they use practical makeup for this. Um mm-hmm. that there's a Marvel released a video after the fact where they sh- at least for that like final shot uh in, in uh in the last episode, you know, you actually get this they, they use like real prosthetics uh to show like death's face. Um you know, on Aubrey Plaza, which I thought was awesome. But again, I love that they were very, yeah, uh, yeah, I love that they were very pronounced in their relationship. And I do wish that we were able to get a little bit more of that. Again, I feel like, again, I feel like it's just one of those things where they just don't have enough time, um, you know, uh, to to flesh all that out. You kind of have to cut some corners somewhere, but the tension between them is, is beautiful. Um, 
you know, I, I, I did, Aubrey Plaza just is just so delightfully evil. And and <laughs> I can't wait because, you know, they're going to bring this character back in some capacity. Death is a huge character in, in Marvel, in, in, in the, the whole Marvel machine of it all. Am I going to get to see, uh, you know, Ryan Reynolds and Aubrey Plaza, like, you know, have their whole Deadpool X death moment? Like, because yeah. Deadpool and death did canonically date in the comics. So I'm just like, Yeah, because, like, that was a thing. And then, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that Death and Thanos had, like, some kind of connection in the They comics. were also, yeah. She that, was like, also... he did it for her, right? Yeah. So it's fine that that wasn't his motivation. I mean, his new motivation wasn't that much more logical. He just yeah. he had all the power in the world and said, "I'm going to have the population because there's not enough resources." But no one's like, <laughs> "Just double the resources." <laughs> but like, no one <laughs> make more cows. What are we? And doing? then I'll kill my stepdaughter. <laughs> right. We're like, just say you wanted to do it. Don't don't act like oh, it's because you guys couldn't share. It's like we we do have a lot of food waste. Actually, it's not. <laughs> It's crazy how that's your plan. Like, nah, man. Restaurants throw a bunch of food out. Shout out to food not. What if we just made more bread, Thanos? No, because you literally could. (laughs) And then you just you said, "I'll kill half of everybody." Just just don't pretend you had her. Just say you want to kill half of everybody. It's fine. Yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's just fine. Just like you know, very. (laughs) Thanos reminds me of a. I don't know, man. Thanos was definitely uh, doing some stuff and watching in DC in January last year. That's all I'm saying. Oh, absolutely, yes. He was he was the first one. (laughs) Mm -hmm. One thousand percent. But no, I I I really loved um, you know Aubrey Plaza's portrayal in this show and that last episode in general. um, You know, I I also love that we end with you know um, you know the Coven of Two brought back together um and i love that marvel mixed up the formula this time Mm because you know they they dropped the last two episodes together and that episode eight it's just like oh wow like there's a whole other episode after this like they do the whole fight scene you get to see wiccan in the wiccan costume Um, which looks so good i wish that episode was like three weeks prior because i would have just done that for halloween (laughs) granted i was so i was i was in the marvel realm anyway but if i saw that a few weeks prior i'm like oh shit i'm gonna do wiccan for halloween (laughs) because Oh man, I was also going to be gaming for Halloween this year if I had time, but uh, unfortunately did uh, did not get there. Channing Tatum has permanently affected the way that I talk, and uh, it is... <laughs> completely <laughs> uh, full transparency. I really strongly disliked Deadpool and Wolverine, but I liked his performance in it. Oh, so uh, the few times because I, I, I wore Gambit to Dragon Con and also to Halloween, so then just to ooh, I'm about to be like, like just getting to just be that guy. <laughs> Like, everyone was like, oh, that's so funny. Everyone was, like, giving me gifts and, like, giving me props and stuff for it. And I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> also, X-Men 97 was this year, which was an incredible project. Oh. But, man. So good. Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to Rogue and Magneto renting out the Danger Room for three hours. Yo, they were... <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Because Morph is just like, they ain't got to practice that hard. They're pretty busted. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> why is Damn. Magneto, the man that controls metal, practicing in the danger room? What's going to happen in there? What's going to hurt Magneto in the danger room? Like, we know. <laughs> but all right. Uh, give, me, give us what we want, Marvel. Just tell us that the characters are fucking. Like, Just say it. <laughs> one of my Marvel hot takes is that... Um, what's that? At some point during the whole um, Ant-Man Quantumania, uh, when um, Kang is, like, stuck in the quantum realm with Michelle Pfeiffer, I was like, you know that these two characters totally fucked. Like, there, there is so do. much there's so much tension between, <laughs> between uh, uh, those two characters on screen. I'm just like, oh, yeah, they totally, <laughs> they totally fucked. Jaina Van Dyne totally fucked Kang the Conqueror. <laughs> like, I mean, you gotta pass time. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of time to pass in there. You might as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, we get that, uh, you know, the, the changing of the formula. Again, the Wiccan costume looks awesome. Um, mm-hmm. There's a, a great video. And, and I think there's, I think it was an article in one of these, like, you know, news, uh, you know, one of these magazines that covers the show. They talked about, like, the, the creation of the costume and how it, it really blends in elements of both Wanda's Wanda and Vision because, you know, Despite uh, how it's, despite as much as uh, you know, Billy wants to say it's like you know she's not my mom, she is her kid. Technically she, speaking, yeah, yeah. Uh, technically speaking, but the costume looks great. And then they flip the formula on a ten where they give you the flashback episode in episode nine, and then you get to see, you know, the how this whole 
uh, you know, hoax of the Witches Road started, uh, you know, with Agatha and, and Nicholas Scratch. Um, but I, you know, I do love that they we get to see a fully realized uh, ghost Agatha, which is very, very fun. It, it's very yes. akin yes. to the comics. I love that. Um, and uh, then we get to see the the, the 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 table set for what is you know the next part of this trilogy, in which is uh, finding the, uh, the poor soul known as Tommy Shepard <laughs> and where he may be in the world. By the way, the scene where he's trying to just kind of force his brother's soul into another host, and then the drowning is happening on the other side again. Not something you would typically see in the MCU, or at least one of the TV shows. And him just asking, like, am I killing this person for my brother? And then her just going, no, sometimes it just happens. And it's just so, like, heart-wrenching to see that scene because he's he's not doing anything wrong, but that innocent kid has no... I mean, that was going to happen to him regardless, I guess, one way or the other, but that's just so tough to even think about, like, the choice of bringing your sibling back in that way. Again, it's not his fault that that kid was drowning. He wasn't causing that kid to drown, but just I, I, I couldn't imagine trying to be on a clock from escaping the final trial, figuring out that you do have the opportunity to save your brother by having him jump into the body of someone about to pass away, trying to make sure that you're not responsible for it and absolve yourself of the guilt of that action. And that, like that's just so much for a character to have to go through all at once in such a small amount of time. And I think they did such a good job of portraying that, like jumping back and forth between the water and them and the emotions are so heightened. And even afterwards, like, you know, Billy gets what he wants from the road and then Agatha still is on that clock and has to, like, it was it was so beautifully shot and so beautifully done. Even just, just the scene of Sashir, sorry, keep doing this. The scene of Jin getting her power back even though the way it's presented is crazy for the whole seat se- series, you're like, damn, I can't believe she was bound. And then for Agatha to be like, oh, my fault. It's just like, what? You know, that whole thing, <laughs> very casual drop of that. But I do yeah. love that, um, much like Samurai Jack, if you've ever seen that, as soon yeah. as the year, uh, excuse me, as soon as Jin finds it out, she's like, oh, solving the problem right now. Like, she yeah. wasted no time. She went directly <laughs> yeah, over yeah. there, said, give me, yep. run me my powers, run, run me that shit. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> give me, give me back my purple. Come like the purple. right, give me my purple. Um, <laughs> I have a question for you, actually. Yeah. So for Nicholas Scratch, she's giving birth, and death is just waiting for either her or Nicholas. I wasn't sure. It seems like Nicholas was supposed to die in a miscarriage. Okay. Is what is what I gathered, and then that's why she's like, please, you know, please, my love, you know, I want more time. And then she allots her a certain amount of time, and then it was after that is when Nicholas Scratch comes to be. And yeah. so that's what it, it I, I had to watch the episode a second time because I was like, wait, let me run that back again because I was I got a little got a little lost there myself. But um I think that's what the the message was, and is that Nicholas Scratch was not supposed to be, and then we, you know, she she gets some time with her son. And she she spends it by stealing the energy from witches and using him as a as a tool. But I, but I'll again, which is I, insane, I, insane. Yeah, but like those last two episodes are so good. And just to touch back on the whole, uh, you know, am I killing this boy so my brother can live? Like I got chills down my spine. That like, oh. Joe Locke acted that out so well, and it makes if you if you're you know if you pay attention to the comic lore of how you know uh, you know Wicked and Speed come to be. Uh, that is incredibly fitting. Tommy Shepard is an incredibly tragic character in in, uh, in in Marvel Comics. He's in and out of juvie. His parents are divorced. Uh, he completely, and I think, in one of the runs of the, of the Young Avengers, I, he like vaporizes his entire school <laughs> because he like moves too fast. Like he is an incredibly complex character, and I cannot wait to see how that is adapted in you know in a in a future series. I hear some people say that we might not see uh you know tommy and billy until they, they say they might they might show up as like students at the xavier school for talented weirdos oh how cool that could be yeah i think um, they'll set up young avengers before they do that because there's no you know they're not going to spend all this time with you know with characters like kate bishop and you know retcon and kamala khan to be a mutant i guess they well i guess they i guess they could still go either way with that but still i don't mm-hmm. think they'd set they spend this much time introducing these children characters, uh, if not to use them earlier than, you know, the next three or four years. But 
um that whole that whole sequence like i was my blew my mind but then yeah. watching that last episode and then you see um you know a lot of the seeds that were planted earlier in the series where like i think there was the uh, the trophy that said best singer that had nicholas his name on it uh and he's singing the song in in a bar full of witches and i'm just like man like this is you know and that's what <sighs> and that's what i love about agatha harkness is that she is very clearly like pinned as this like selfish evil you know villain you know a front facing villain in the show for so long, but she's incredibly complex where you feel, you know, where, where you feel empathy for her because she lost her son and she's too afraid to, to, you know, leave the mortal earth to face him. And I just like, and yeah. it was, Oh God, it was, it's just so gut wrenching. And that also, again, speaks to the range of Catherine Hahn where they just really let her be in her bag where she, again, she's very funny. She's very flirty. It's very, it's, it's very Catherine Hahn. But then you have those moments like that where she's just, where she's, you know, very good at being a dramatic actress as well. It's so, de- it, it, again, super devastating because, um, characters jumping into action immediately. So the final episode, um, Wiccan's just like, yeah, I think I'm just going to banish you. <laughs> and she's being so, like, silly, like, oh, come on, you can't. Okay, please don't. And then you get to the core reason of why she is so terrified of death. And it's so tragic for her to just think about, like, I can't, I can't see my son again. And for her to literally, the same way that Wiccan and Scarlet Witch do, albeit different methods, to just kind of, like, rewrite reality to prevent that because their grief is just so strong like it was still really, really good, just just great TV because yeah. Catherine Hahn again is putting on a that that whole episode. Like her performance, she eats in that episode. But even just those last few moments where she's just finally being vulnerable, and in and I'm similar to her in a way where it's like I'll somewhat have like a very silly, goofy exterior, but there is a lot of me that's like very guarded uh, and very uh, cautious about being earnestly vulnerable. Um, at least not until a certain amount of time has passed. And for her to, you know, still be kind of like just trying to like protect herself with jokes or snark or, you know, try and be in control and be like, you can't even banish me. And then she realizes that she has none. And she realizes she's so close to having to go back and see her child, who also she spends hundreds of years being blamed for his death. Like, that is such a powerful scene. And it's a lot more intense and a lot more layered than just like, you know, I don't know, someone just jumping in front of a bullet to save someone else or something like that. Like not to discount some of the other, like, you know, big moments in the MCU series or in the MCU shows or movies or whatever. But that one was just like, I'm literally begging you, please don't send me in front of Nicholas scratch. It was so complicated even to get to the point where I got to have the time I had with him, But I couldn't imagine the way it fe- would feel to go back and have to relive uh, mourning his loss. And I, th- and I think a, a large portion of, like, she was already stealing people's magic to keep herself around and powerful anyway. She was going to do that. But it had to be compounded by a whole another layer, just knowing that by doing so, she could keep delaying, you know, her inevitable eventual death. Um, yeah. And I think they handled it so well. I really, really like the way they handled it. No, for sure. Um, you know, I, I, I like the way that they, they set those two up to just kind of do their own little go see adventures. Um, again, we don't really know how they'll feed back into the main picture of things. Um, and, as, and, you know, just to kind of touch on a few of the other, uh, you know, in my opinion, the highlights that we haven't uh, gotten to yet. One of the things to me that I love that they handled in the show is that they're not afraid to talk about Wanda and, you know, the Scarlet Witch in general. Um, and I like the way that they handle it, that they don't say that she's dead. They just say that she's gone. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's clear in some capacity that I want, you know, we we don't know what happened to Wanda in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. It's suggested that she's she's perished. Uh, she, she's, she, that she might have died on Mount Wondergore somewhere uh, with the Darkhold. But they leave that door open, which I think, again, you know, Wanda is one of the most powerful characters in in, uh, in the, you know, in t- not just Marvel Pantheon, but also in terms of the MCU. Hard um, to kill that character. She's hard. Real yeah, hard, hard to, to kill, kill that character. Like, <laughs> they they yeah. tried. Because even in Doctor Strange, when, you know, that final scene with her, 
If I don't see a body, she ain't do it. You know yeah. I mean? I, yeah. Nah. Rule of thumb. If I don't see a body, that, that you know, she's out there. She's exactly. Uh, yeah, she's still she's still living out sitcoms and in, in in the in the Swiss Alps or something, um, <laughs> which is <laughs> something. But something. You know, I, I, for I, sure. Yeah, I love that. I love that they leave the door open with that character. Uh, and one of my favorite cameos because we don't get a lot of wandavision tie-in once we kind of get into the thick of things like obviously there we you know there's there's the citizens of westview who are, who are again forced to, to to live through you know the uh, the nonsense of what happened here um never you know, really do I, get a normal day with them like all those memes about nah. like lol living in ohio that's actually just westview that is yeah. that's all that is because like even the final fight uh and uh you know between death and catherine and wiccan her neighbors come out of the house being like, I, I, I'm so tired. <laughs> like, <laughs> not again. <laughs> not again. Please. Yeah. Average living in New Jersey moment. Right. Uh, it's, 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 it's giving, it's definitely giving New Jersey for sure. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I, I do think one of the best ways they tie WandaVision back into the show is with everybody's favorite uh, fake out. Uh, Evan Peters coming back as Ralph Boner. Um, I love the way that he's just like this, he's just this damaged, this damaged man, uh, you know, telling ghost stories. He definitely has a podcast. Uh, you know, oh, like, for like, sure. Oh, he's, he, he is, he is selling you better help ads and bottles of ayahuasca. Uh, you know, bro is, uh, bro is damaged. Uh, and I love that they use him as sort of like this, this, you know, this key to unlock everything else going on with Billy where he's like, Oh yeah. Like, you know, she had two kids. Uh, you know, we don't, we know the, the speedster and his, you know, mind reading little and his mind reading brother. Like, uh, I love that they brought that character back. I love that they brought Evan Peters back again. One of the highlights of, uh, you know, WandaVision. Um, you know, I love that they just, you know, let, let him be goofy. Um, yeah, yeah. They really let him play around. Cause I mean, him popping up, as Quicksilver, quote unquote, was so tongue in cheek and such a funny way to do it, but yeah, the character outside of that single joke still does get a lot of room to kind of like explore how Wanda affected him. Um, yeah, and I think they did a, a great job with letting him just you know he seems so crazy and he seems like a conspiracy theorist, but he's actually right about everything he's talking about. But it just sounds so crazy, no one's ever going to believe him. And it sucks, because yeah. it's just like, wow, the one guy that's not lying about this shit is like, is getting a little outcast, probably, from society. Because I don't yeah. even know how you pretend <laughs> to have a normal life after surviving what happened in Westview in general. Let yeah. alone what happened with him. So. <laughs> after yeah, being he, held hostage fun. by a witch in your own home uh, is, is, you know, I don't I don't blame him for being a little, you know, uh, mess up in the brain. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, at uh, best. Yeah. Oh, 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 I can't. The only other character that we uh, we haven't mentioned yet is Alice. Uh, we don't get to spend, you know, a lot of time with Alice, but I I, I like her story. Um, I like her relationship with Billy, and you know, it's it's a it's a shame that damn protection witch had to go out the way that she did. Um, I felt but, awful for Alice. I really uh, did. What a great character. She was so much fun. She was fun. She was dynamic. She had like a little bit of edge without like trying too hard. Uh, and she was very courageous. Like, don't get me wrong. If I had to be any of those characters, it's probably Jen. When they're like, "Oh, do you just live in that little circle of protection now?" She's like, "Yeah, yeah." I was just on fire, but you know, but I, so I'm not going I'm out there. Right here. Yeah, I'm staying right here till y'all figure this out. Call me. I'm not. No, no, no. But yeah, Alice being the protection witch and getting to honestly, even though she doesn't get as much time as some of the other characters. Still having, like, a pretty interesting dynamic with, like, connecting to her deceased mom and figuring out, like, the value of this, well, which, for, from her perspective, it's real, but, like, the value of the song and, you know, what she is supposed to do and how she's just ran away from her destiny for so long. I think that's the one through line I really liked in this series is that pretty much every character fully has, like, a destiny and a greater potential, minus Jin, who's just trying to go back to normal, but they have this incredible power that they're so terrified of like connecting with. And and then you get to see, you know, Alice, she does get to do that. She gets to, you know, confront what it's like to live without her mom being there and also, you know, actually get to play music and do all that stuff that she was a little bit too afraid to do. And she does at least get like a complete arc, even though she does go out in that way. Which, again, was sad because she was just trying to help and 
Catherine, or excuse me, and um, Agatha definitely took like full advantage of that. And nobody really stopped it from happening either, but no, <laughs> y'all kind of just you know they were just like, girl, no, this. no, <laughs> no, no, <it>. don't, <laughs> Alice, no, like they didn't even grab her. <laughs> Like they're watching it happen, yeah. just being like, "Damn, she really going out damn, like that." Damn, that's crazy. That's crazy. You know <laughs> Someone should do something. And the door opens. They like, do we want to get the box? Damn, that's crazy. Poor Alice. <laughs> Agatha, how could uh, you? And then in that episode, then, we. And then Wiccan is just like, "I'm mad at everybody now," and just throws everybody yeah. off the road. I'm like, nah, "What the fuck did they do?" But yeah, <laughs> all right, teenage boys and their angst. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. And also, at least in that episode, we got the, you know, the Ballad of the Witch's Road is a banger. I have been singing <laughs> this. This song goes stupid hard. It, it, it is. Absolute, it really is. Uh, it, it is. Uh, it is an absolute joy. We love, again. It, it's just like this. This show is so camp in like all the best ways. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we love the fully realized sets. I love that scene in the finale where Rio just like cuts like has like the. Uh, like the the Truman Show moment where she just like cuts into the backdrop and just like literally leaves the scene. Yeah, that was so wild. I was just like, they are going for it. On yeah, this series. Life, life is life has many open doors, Ed boy. <laughs> it really, it really <laughs> was that. Yeah, <laughs> walking through the background. Um, I guess to just to kind of to wrap up, you know, obviously we we are left very open ended with where the show ends. Obviously, uh, you know, Agatha and uh, Billy are off to go find Tommy and Jen is off to do whatever with her powers. Um, so Get her groove back. Yeah. I was like, you know, looking at, looking at what we have again. And, and what I found actually very interesting is that Marvel, I don't know if you've seen the, this, this, the, this like splash trailer they put, uh, you know, in, in like some of their advertisements, but they basically announced what their entire Disney plus lineup is going to be from like the end of this year to the end of next year. Um, so we, we got trailers for, um, Ironheart. We, uh, we, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm very excited for that. We have Daredevil coming up in March, which is going to be cool. Um, Mm -hmm. we saw the first look at Wonder Man, which I think has the potential to be a very interesting series, uh, next December. Um, but when do you, like, what, when do you think would, will be like an appropriate amount of time before we see any of these characters again? (laughs) I, I would probably say... Maybe closer to a two-year cycle, but considering who Wiccan is, and you brought up a great point in saying they are definitely putting themselves in a position to possibly set up the Young Avengers. Avengers. Um, I wouldn't be mad if we saw Wiccan, Wiccan sooner than that, and I would love for us to get to Hawkling at some point as well. Uh, I don't know enough about the comics to know where Hawkling comes in. I just know them kind of as like a pair. So obviously him finding his brother is more important than you know, him finding love or whatever. But I would like to see it. Uh, <laughs> I'd still like to see that happen. Um, yeah. I, the only thing I'm... Here's the only thing I'm a little nervous about. So, X-Men 97 was such a fucking masterpiece. Minus... Peak. Literally peak. Like, minus what was happening behind the scenes, which I think, Yes. You know. <laughs> Not um, good. But the show the itself content, great. The, show, the content of the show itself was so phenomenal And all year when I was talking about X-Men 97, the main thing I said was, I think a really important reason on why this works is that it's not trying to tie itself into the greater universe. It is its own individual story. It has its own lore if you want to catch up, but we're just going to lock in here and set up stuff for this series. But at the same time, after the Marvel's light, well, spoiler, you know that you already kind of know they're starting to set up like uh, the MCU official X-Men live action movies. Which yeah. I'm not mad about because boy, there have been some there there have been some stinkers leading up to this <laughs> that weren't it wasn't their fault, but there's just like a, several very bad X Men related movies. So I'm excited yep. for that. Um, I just don't I don't want either that live action movie or the animated series. I don't want them to have to interact or play off of each other in any way. I would like them to both just organically get to keep growing without having to do certain things for the cartoon or vice versa for the movies. That's my yeah. only concern. I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think given that they've, I, I agree. I think it's going to be a couple years before we see these characters again. There's a whole lot of other stuff that we need to kind of feed in here. Um, especially given that Marvel basically took a, t- <laughs> took a, um, you know, a gap year 
this year mm-hmm. essentially in terms of just like setting up what's happening in the multiverse saga you know grant you know some some of that was i i'm sure fiscal some of it was also figuring out what the fuck to do with jonathan majors and that whole thing um you know so now that we have yeah. a, a much <laughs> yikes now that we have a much clearer vision of where we're going with this um you know i i think uh, we'll you know we'll we'll maybe set up some of the more like ground level stuff obviously we have um you know captain the uh, captain america 4 coming out next year uh we're getting the fantastic 4 next year which is a whole nother can of worms they have to establish before the whole uh secret wars and and uh, doomsday of it all um i think it makes most sense given that they you know, we already know the Vision Quest is happening. Paul Bettany's coming back for that, and James Spader apparently too, which is really cool. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, which is I'm, I'm count me in for that. I I think uh, Ultron is again not in, in in terms of just Marvel villains one of the coolest, and James Spader's portrayal of it, he's just so creepy and weird, and it, it made so much sense. Yeah, um, and, I, and I definitely felt like Ultron was a little underutilized in like the global like look at the MCU because Ultron is yeah. a really cool character. Uh, both in execution and concept, and I would. Love He's the to best see character. What if? <laughs> and what if they 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 realize that? Um, and and they you know they use that character to its uh you know to its full potential uh in that medium. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I think knowing that we're getting a third part of these characters where we're gonna see what happened to Vision after everything happened in Westview. I think you can see that as maybe and maybe not like a launch board to bring back in, you know, Agatha and Billy, but you also use that as an opportunity to also plug Tommy into that show because now that we know there's a kid yeah. out there that has a speedster in him and we gotta go find him. So we gotta you know, I, I think that's a, a good launching point for that. And we already know that's not coming in they, they've said that's not coming out till twenty twenty six again. So we're gonna have some time to kinda sit with these characters and then you have you know another spider-man movie you got to throw in there there's a doctor strange three you have to to put in there they'll yeah. probably give me another thor movie that i don't want at some point uh too so <laughs> it's, I, it's, it's so sad how much i loved loved thor ragnarok and the spies love and thunder it's it was really so bad. sad <laughs> it was like, really lightning in a bottle and i love taika watiti I mean, I love what we do in the shadows. I just started watching the final season of that last night. Um, like, I think he's great. I think he's really talented. But Love and Thunder just was shit from a butt for two hours. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was Natalie not- Portman came back for that. That was crazy. Uh, God bless her. So my God, <laughs> my God. But yeah, <laughs> she's yeah, uh, love her. But my God. Um, but Chad, you know that that basically covers everything I wanted to talk about Agatha. If you haven't if you haven't gathered it from this point in the episode, watch it. Uh, it's very good. Um, and listen, this this has me really excited for what the rest of the Marvel TV slate coming up is going to have for us. Daredevil coming born again is one of my most anticipated shows for for next year. I mm-hmm. am getting gearing up to rewatch uh, the last season of Daredevil. Um, you know, from Netflix, just to kind of get myself back in the mood, because um, I just love these characters. I love the I I loved the you know the, the, uh, Charlie Cox's portrayal as Daredevil. I'm excited to see uh, where you know where the rest of the TV stuff uh, shakes out here. And um, yeah, listen, I, I think being a Marvel fan is fun again. You know, we there's, there's yes, there's, there's been yes. there's been some qual there's some quality stuff coming out, and we'll see. You know, you said you weren't the biggest fan of Deadpool and Wolverine, but you know, fisc- fiscally, obviously, you know the movie. Made oh, it's gonna print money, money so for sure. It's yeah. gonna it's it's a it's a money printing machine. Um, but. And, you know, and I, I talk as if, uh, you know, Captain America is not coming out sooner than it actually is. It's all, it's, it's already November. That movie comes out in February. That's not that far from now. Yeah, that should be pretty soon. And I, I hope it gets the marketing push that it deserves because like, uh, getting to see more with getting, getting a movie with Giancarlo Esposito in it. I don't care what it is. I'm going to watch it. And then there's also, um, uh, oh my God. Julia Lewis Dreyfus is there too. Uh, so the cast potentially very strong and I really, I really hope it's successful. Uh, and then quietly, I know that since Daredevil is coming back and is continuing what was the Netflix series, which I've been saying for the most part is better than a lot of the MCU series. Not all of it, but definitely most of it. Uh, yeah. Minus, I don't know, maybe like, I don't know, Iron Fist or something, but like, uh, Luke Cage season two was phenomenal. Oh, so good a tiny sliver of an opportunity for that to ever come back now that daredevil's coming back please because i love that and i love 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 jessica jones i just didn't watch the final season but the first two seasons i loved 
Uh, but I I really hope that the Daredevil continuation is successful and they kind of like take a look at Luke Cage and Jessica and kind of consider maybe bringing them back further too because those shows were fantastic. Yeah, I think we're going to – my hot take is I think we're going to see these characters in this show because I think what from what I remember during the whole acquisition deal of all you know the other Marvel stuff is that I think there is a, a time period in which – Marvel couldn't use those characters after a certain amount of time. And I think the character that had those rights come up first was Daredevil. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're able to see him as cameo in, uh, you know, cameo in Spider-Man cameo in uh, She-Hulk and make a brief cameo in Echo, which is cool. Um, So I think, I think at some point we're going to start seeing those other defender characters weave their way back in. Uh, Iron Fist could stay at home. That shows. We don't need him. It's fine. No, one. don't even, it's fine. Don't even mention it. Yeah. It's it's fine. (laughs) He's busy. I don't know. He, yeah. he, he went, <laughs> he's he went he's fighting crime somewhere else. Something. Uh, Who cares? He, he moved. Uh, before we get out of here, though, quick, uh, um, just a uh, quick um, letterbox review on uh, the Penguin so far, because I know we've been big, uh, big fans of how the show is uh, shaking out. And the finale comes out this weekend. So, oh, OK, uh, I do have to go. But before I go, I will say, yeah, the Penguin is by such a giant margin best show of the year it is so incredibly good every single detail has been so meticulously planned for the plot the way the actors have been able to create this show from a character the penguin who we really weren't that connected to and even in the um even in the batman which was fantastic he didn't really get to do like he wasn't nearly as big as like the Riddler or you know Catwoman or Batman himself so we're Mm -hmm. so my note for the series before my note for the Penguin as a character was that I felt like he kind of didn't get to do everything he wanted to do in the Batman and then later on we get to the series it's like oh yeah Colin Farrell is a god um portraying this extremely complicated nuance definitely evil (laughs) for sure evil nothing to debate about that uh but such a complicated and interesting character and then Sophia Falcone being the foil who very quickly became one of my favorite female characters I've ever seen in fiction ever um and the series isn't even done yet every character in the penguin is so fresh and dynamic and interesting and layered and it's I cannot sing the show's praises enough if you haven't watched it I know it, again just like Agatha kind of a sleeper show I cannot even verbalize how absolutely blown away I am by this series, how talented the actors are, how great this plot is. And I really hope that this cleans up at at award season because they have, they have not made a single mistake. Um, Yeah. I, I can't gas it up enough. Episode seven, the way it ends, I was like, I don't know how this show can keep operating on a level this high and still be this consistent and not feel like anything is sacrificed. And I, I cannot recommend the show harder. I really can't. Yeah, I forgive you. Last season of How I Met Your Mother, uh, Christina. <laughs> yes. I, I forgive you. I forgive you. That's that's my that's my end review. Oh, also, just uh, a, a quick editor's note: when I stopped the recording, don't immediately dip out of the call because I gotta wait for the upload to finish. So, Got that's, it. Uh, <laughs> Riverside's funny. Uh, but yeah, listen, that's gonna be uh, it's gonna be it for this episode, folks. Uh, Sai. First of all, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, we do not get to see you together nearly as much as we as we should. Um, I've been taking kind of a gap year in terms of traveling this year. Uh, Understandably so. Only I'm, having two yeah. weeks of PTO stinks. Uh, but hey, Ooh. we're out here. But Dang it but, well, but uh, it's, it's we'll, we'll run into each other at some point too because you're going to be closer than you're moving. Are you still moving to New York or is that not happening anymore? Yes, as soon as I get a job, yes. I am there. Uh, cool. Hopefully, I mean, if every if well, not that things are going right in the world, but if, if uh, hopefully soon, uh, I'd love to be there before LM, uh, LMBM, honestly. But yeah, definitely going to be up there soon. I'll be up that way soon. All right. Well, this, once you are, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be we'll, we'll be we'll be chatting. So, I, 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 you know, we'll see each other soon. But uh, yeah, let the people know where they can find you and where they can uh, listen to you. Uh, yeah. So, guys. Um, if you're still on the uh, half of the Titanic that isn't in the water yet of Twitter, you can find me there at PBLK. Uh, and if you go there, you can find me on Blue Sky, which is better, Twitter, 
Uh, I think it's Psy dash FGC. I'm not sure. I, I just set it up like last night in kind of a fugue <laughs> state, honestly. Uh, but you can always catch me there. Um, I am also one of the hosts of Shonen Chumps. Uh, we are about to start releasing episodes weekly instead of bi-weekly, just because we've just been able to kind of connect and record more, including five minutes from now. Uh, but you can check us out on all streaming platforms, but definitely Spotify. Uh, Shonen Chumps, S-H-O-U-N-E-N Chumps. It is a show... Uh, by and for uh, black and queer nerds because we deserve to take up space in the nerd fandom and we're talking Absolutely. about of course you know a lot of a ton of anime stuff but also a lot of marvel and dc projects and of course current events because you can't really not uh in music and it's a lot of fun you know we goof off we've been friends for like 15 years and we just you know have a really good time but yeah definitely check us out uh anywhere you are checking out a podcast and also koopa thank you so much for having me on i've had a blast yeah listen you're welcome back anytime uh, i love chopping it up with you and i'll put all that stuff in the description below so definitely uh, check everything out but you guys can follow me on the app formerly known as twitter uh at koopa mm-hmm. nj uh i'm also on blue sky on the butterfly app at koopa nj i think as well so we'll uh i'll start plugging that because it is uh way cooler over there um and yeah do you uh it sure you, guys, is. Uh, you guys can check us out we release episodes uh you know uh every Weekend, if you guys uh, want to hear more, me yap more about other stuff, I host a Pokemon TCG podcast with my fr- uh, with one of my local friends. We talk about uh, cardboard. Uh, my desk is overtaken with Pokemon cards. It's a, it's a problem. I will fix it as soon as next year happens. But that's going to be it for us tonight, folks. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, and we will see you next time. Good night, everyone. Bye.